Hello, Rwanda has announced that new revised land transfer fees will be introduced in December of this year. This comes as the government is currently in the process of digitizing land titles. My name is Makeda Mahario, and on the CNBC Africa special, I have the head of the Land Administration Department of the Rwanda Land Management and Use Authority, Grace Nishimwe, and attorney at Land Lab law firm Damasen Munyangaju on the line to discuss what these changes and other land policy in the country mean for investment. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us. And let's go ahead and start with Grace. Could you just briefly guide us through what the revised land policy stipulates? Thank you so much. Uh, could you allow me to talk briefly about the previous land policy? Because it is uh, the one on which we based different uh, uh, land reforms. And this current land policy is the continuation of what have been achieved during the implementation of the, uh, the previous land policy. So maybe I can start with uh, the, this previous land policy for you to, to, to understand where we are going and where uh, uh, we, the strategies that we are taking. Uh, in the previous land policy of 2000. Four, we had like two main uh, two main objectives. One was uh, to put in place an, a good land administration system, which will guarantee the security of tenure and reduce uh, land disputes. In implement, to implement this uh, recommendation of the land policy, a land tenure regularization uh, program has been conducted in Rwanda, where a systematic land registration was implemented all over the country and where 11.4 million parcels have been demarcated and adjudicated and uh, 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 and land owners have received their land titles the second objective of the previous land policy was uh, to put in place instrument which will support the rational use of land so uh, in from 2011 to 2012, a national land use and development uh, master plan have been developed to guide the rational and optimal use uh, of land in Rwanda. This uh, uh, land policy of 2004 ha had to be reviewed to uh, to implement or, or to align with uh, emerging uh, uh, strategic document, which are the NST1 uh, and the Vision 2015, but also to cater for the different challenges we encountered while implementing the land policy of 2004. The current, uh, the current land policy is structured around uh, three main pillars, which is the land use planning, uh, surveying and mapping, land use management and uh, uh, land administration. All those pillars uh, uh, want to enforce the, the rational use of land, but also to continue to bring the security of tenure and to ease the service delivery in land, uh, in land administration. So uh, what I can mainly say about different changes that we, we, uh, are, are coming in, First of all, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, about the hierarchy of the different land use plans, where now we are shifting from the district boundary-based planning to a, a sectorial and a suitable land suitability-based planning. We now have a national land use and development master plan and the sectorial land use plan, which will be implemented at the local level by the district land use plan. In the land use management, uh, uh, the, the land policy focus mainly on uh, uh, on uh, on indicating ways or ensuring how the land in Rwanda ha can be used in efficient way. Uh, it it, it gives uh, direction to the national land use master plan on how it can allocate land to different sectors, to different sectors, but also to to, to have a land bag for the future investment and also uh, to, to be able to monitor the land use in the country. For the land administration uh, pillar, it focuses right. on how to, to maintain what have been achi achieved during the, the, the land policy of 2004, but also bringing innovation, uh, IT innovation in, in, in service delivery. 
and also uh, it, it also recommend to continue to ensure the security of tenure which we will continue to promote investment on land uh, and uh, um, to, to also to to take action on which will will we, we towards the reduction of of different fees uh, of different land transactions thank you Damasen, I wanted to have your assessment on the land revisions as it pertains to investment. What's your assessment of these revisions? Uh, my assessment is that the current uh, national land policy uh, in regards to uh, uh, investments uh, is that uh, there is a shift, like uh, Grace has uh, said, there is a shift from uh, 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 the land administration considerations alone, but we are trying to, 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 to shift uh, uh, into the land use planning that is the facilitative uh, to investments in the country. Uh, considering the pillars that Grace just mentioned, we have the land use uh, plans that are now going to be inclusive uh, with the different uh, stakeholders in this, in this area of, uh, of planning, quite different from the previous where the planning was limited to uh, a few uh, uh, local administration entities. So we see uh, this land uh, management uh, the, the land, the current land policy, um, being inclusive in terms of uh, planning, uh, being considered, uh, considering uh, 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 the private sector involvement in this context, um, uh, and then uh, with the availability of the the, the, the land administration data. Uh, is going to be facilitative in terms of uh, uh, the land plans, the, 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 the developers, uh, it comes to which land is supposed to be used for inv investment to be for the local or for the international investors. And uh, uh, I think the inclusiveness of the, 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 the various uh, uh, um, entities that are going to be involved in the planning is going to be so facilitative in terms of uh, motivating the investment in the country, uh, both for the national level and for the people themselves. It's going to facilitate in terms right. of uh, 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 collection of levies and taxes, uh, uh, of which is going to be invested uh, uh, at the national level. But again, it also captures a number of changes that are going to be uh, expected to come out in the, in, the, in the new land law that is expected very soon, uh, which also tackles uh, uh, the lease terms, which have uh, 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 to consider the long term uh, uh, compared to the short term uh, or lease term that were short uh, uh, in, in the previous land policy. So the long term uh, lease terms, right? Um, the, the, the freehold uh, titling that is going to benefit both the nationals and the, the, the foreigners. Uh, all these are the areas that are going to be some more facilitative in terms of investment when you compare to when you compare with the previous land policy. Right, thank you for that, Damasen. Grace, back to you. Uh, in what ways do you think the, the revised policies will be facilitating uh, increased and more efficient investment in the country? Yeah, thank you. Uh, if there is the, an efficient. The, the new land so. policy, uh, we have one, one, one key action, policy action, which indicates that the government should have a, a land bank for strategic investment. Uh, 
So um, now, currently, we do not have that, uh, that, that land bank clearly, but now we are developing it so that any investment who is coming, can, can, we, uh, the government can indicate the, the designated land for, for, for example, tourism, for agriculture, uh, uh, which, is available, which uh, is available for investment. The second thing that the land policy is emphasizing is the ease of 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 service delivery so uh, in, in 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 recommending the use of it technology uh, and innovation it is it, it aims to to ease the service delivery to make it more transparent so that any investment investor who come in the country and want to pro process any transaction on land knows exactly what we are to do how, uh, what time taken to, to process uh, different transaction and the, um, what to expect. So this transparency also encourage investment on land here in, in the country, but also to maintain the security of tenure. To know that if the land is registered to you, uh, there the, the will no longer be any dispute and you can invest uh, on the land. Uh, according to, to what have been designated, that land in different land use master plan, it gives the security uh, to investor to invest on land, uh, knowing that they, they own or they have, they, they can use the land. Uh, and also to know that there is specific uh, designation land use, which, which are in, in, a, uh, in different land, land use plans. So this, the, the availability of information to investor make easier uh, the investment on land here in Rwanda. Right. Uh, we know, uh, Grace, that there is the digitalization efforts happening right now. Very briefly, could you just uh, tell us how far along that effort has come and how effective it has been so far? So uh, before 2004, uh, the land services processes was manual. But at that time, we had only 1% of land which was registered. We, with the land tenure regularization that we, we conducted from 2009 and, uh, to 2013, we had a lot of data which needed to, to, to be kept recorded and which needed also to be maintained because you know that uh, uh, land information are dynamic so it change every moment uh, and we we developed uh, what we call here a land administration information system which uh, supported us in first of all in in recording in maintaining and also in in in, in in updating the land register. Uh, this land administration information system was a centralized uh, system, but we worked to decentralize it so that um, people can access land services at the district level. Now, currently, uh, at the district can process uh, different transaction at the district and they can print the land titles at the district level. Uh, and also, there is uh, some uh, some initiative from the government side uh, with the partnership with Rwanda Online, where we the all all government services have to to be uh, to be kept. So we have different land services on Irembo where people can access them directly. Uh, for example, if I want to, to right. make a transfer, I can go to Irem platform and I can start the transfer without any other person, uh, 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 without meeting and staff or without needing anyone to help me if uh, I, I know how to use internet. So right. uh, this initiative right. to, to digitize the, the land register make it, it easier to access the land services to access the information if you want to buy land and you want to know if this person is the right owner of the land, you can access all those information on your phone, mobile phone, or also going on land, land information portal, you can access all the information needed to decide uh, uh, if you, you, you will transact or not. And uh, uh, also right, we and are going, we, we have 
Right. I'm sorry to, to, to cut you, Grace, but I will be coming back to you shortly for a bit more on that. I just quickly want to get Damasen's uh, insight on his uh, opinion on how uh, important it is or how unimportant, I'm not sure, but what is the impact of digitalization on land administration? How necessary is that for you, Damasen? Uh, I think digitization is very important in this context uh, because it's all about bringing together um, the land data and making it very easily accessed by the public and the, the government institutions that are in charge of using it. Uh, with this uh, data, uh, we can make transactions, uh, of course, various transactions. Uh, including even uh, uh, the tax transactions with the accessibility. We have now made it very easy uh, for the commercial banks to access uh, this uh, data very easily. We have some other uh, government agencies that uh, make use of this uh, uh, digital data uh, by carrying out the day-to-day -day attributions like we have the development, uh, the, the Rwanda Development uh, Board, which deals directly with investors, be national and the uh, foreigners. Uh, so we know with use of this data, which land can be accessed, which one land can be used for what purposes. And by, by the presence of it, even cut down some uh, previously experienced uh, disputes that uh, uh, we are best or not knowing who owns what and where. So uh, we see disputes even when it comes to justice sector, uh, the disputes are going a little bit minimal because we can easily track even the, 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 the people that are trying to, 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 to do fraud over land. Uh, so there is easy access by institutions, by, by, by the general public and the, even uh, um, the investors, the private sector can easily access this information. So even the land use planners, right. uh, now they have all they need on their exposure in terms of planning uh, uh, with the effectiveness or the optimal use of, of land. They know this location, this land can be suitable for this. The other one can be protected for the environmental issues. This one can be invested, suitable for right. this particular investment. So from analog to digital, really, uh, it is a basket that does a lot in the country in terms of promoting uh, the sustainable development in the country in the future, uh, even the, the presence. Uh, so it even helps uh, uh, knowing which areas can be protected for the future generations. Uh, for, for the use of the future, which land can right, be and, and invested provides on uh, more information and in that regard. For... Right. Uh, Grace, I, I did want to ask you to touch a bit on the land transfer fees before uh, we, we move on to the closing. You know, there is... Um, under review the land transfer fees that are to be introduced in December of this year. Could you just tell us a little bit more about what we should be expecting from that? Yes, thank you. Uh, now, currently, we have a flat fee of uh, 30,000 Rwandan francs to transfer land. Uh, it is divided into three categories. We have 20,000, which is uh, the trans for the transfer, we have the 5,000 for the a new title, and we have the 5,000 for the land notary services. Before that, we used to have a proportion fee of 6% uh, uh, of the value of the property. But this has been changed because it was ex expensive, it was uh, not easy for investors and for the citizen to, 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 to do the transfer. Uh, and currently, uh, in rural areas, citizens also indicate it is still a challenge to, to, to pay the transfer fees. And now, the Minister of Environment with other stakeholders are discussing uh, to see uh, uh, how to determine a fee which will allow everyone in this country to transfer the land. 
uh, this discussion is ongoing and yes, by December, we know uh, the decision of the uh, different, different stakeholders that are discussing about that. But also with the, the initiative of going paperless, there is some, uh, uh, the amount, for example, the 5,000 that I was mentioning, which uh, uh, is allocated to the a new land title, will be remo removed automatically because we are going paperless. So there is that discussion uh, uh, that are, right. uh, are ongoing. It will it tend to reduce the transfer fee, but also there is this uh, five thousand which will be removed in a new in a near future because we are going paperless. Right. Thank you, Grace, for uh, that update. Damasen, you know, there has been public outcry and a challenge in courts uh, to the Supreme Court uh, last invalidated, when the uh, su Supreme Court last invalidated an article in the property tax law, which set an additional tax of 50% on a plot. What's your take on that? I, I do think that uh, um, this is a question of time and in how the general public perceives the, all these changes. Uh, because uh, it's not the first time that we have had changes about releases and taxes. Uh, at times, some provisions, yes, uh, could be reconsidered and be, be getting addressed to the needs of, uh, of the general public. But uh, 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 as my colleague mentioned, we just evolved from uh, uh, some aspects that require changes time after time. And as you mentioned that there, was, uh, that there has been the concern uh, uh, engaging the Supreme Court or the justice sector to consider uh, redressing these aspects that uh, at least the public tries to show up that uh, it's going beyond uh, the capabilities or um, just basing on perceptions that are different about uh, the taxes or the lease fees. Uh, so the Supreme Court getting involved in it uh, uh, because the public uh, tried to show it up as, as, as an issue, uh, I think in itself is a remedy uh, towards getting to the right uh, direction that uh, uh, seemingly may be fitting the general public uh, wants. But generally speaking, when it comes to taxes, uh, you never find the level or the ratio that is going to be fit uh, all the perceptions in the, 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 in the general public. The good thing is that uh, our, our institutions right. are, are integrated and every institution is trying to do the needful so that when there is uh, such a concern or the other, and then it is either addressed by like, yes, it could be addressed by the Supreme Court because that was uh, uh, an aspect that had to go through the uh, the, the revise of the provisions that were highlighted as making uh, uh, issues. So it's glad that uh, uh, such right. an issue was considered by the Supreme Court and of course directed how we can uh, be able to refrain it and uh, at least bring it to the wishes of the general public of which the, 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 the government is working for. Right. Uh, Damasen, thank you for that. Now, as we wrap up, we are coming close to the end of our discussion. Very briefly, Grace, I would just like for you to uh, tell us about what this entails. You know, under the National Strategy for Transformation, the government aims to strengthen land allocation, uh, land administration and management to ensure optimal allocation and use of land. Exactly what does this mean as we close out this conversation? It means that we are continue, we are building uh, a land administration system, uh, which respects uh, or follow the principle the principle of a good governance. We are building transparency, effectiveness, efficiency, land administration, which will make transparent the land allocation in in, in Rwanda, but also which will will support the monitoring of the land use. In, in Rwanda. So, uh, for example, we have the land administration information system, as I was saying, and this land administration information has big data and it is being integrated with the land use, different land use master plan to, 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 to 
to be able to to control or to monitor the land use change uh, the land use change in the country so that we can inform policy makers on the trends that the, we are we are having and guide them in the land use planning uh, in a better way so uh, the land administration together with different instruments are being used to 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 make uh, the land allocation smooth, efficient, but also to monitor and to effic efficiently use the land in Rwanda. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much for that, Grace. And I think it's the perfect place for us to end this conversation. You've been watching a CNBC Africa special on Rwanda land policy and its impact on investment with attorney Damasen Munyangaju and Grace Nishimwe of the Rwanda Land Management and Use Authority. My name is Makeda Mahario and we'll see you the next time.